Blackjack whined softly. It must have been a laugh. I looked back at my comfortable bed. My bronze shield still hung on the wall, dented and unusable, and on my nightstand was Annabeth's magic Yankees cap. On an impulse, I stuck the cap in my pocket. I guess I had a feeling, even then, that I wasn't coming back to my cabin for a long time. Chapter 8 I Make a Dangerous Promise Blackjack gave me a ride down the beach. I had to admit it was pretty cool, being on a flying horse, skimming over the waves at 100 miles an hour, with the wind in my hair, and the sea spray in my face. Hey, it beats water skiing any day. Here, Blackjack slowed down and turned into the circle. Straight down. Thanks. I tumbled off his back and plunged into the icy sea. I'd gotten more comfortable doing stunts like that over the last couple of years. I could pretty much move however I wanted to underwater, just by willing the ocean currents to change around me and propel me along. I could breathe underwater too, no problem, and my clothes never got wet unless I wanted them to. I shot down into the darkness, 20, 30, 40 feet. The pressure wasn't uncomfortable. I'd never tried to push it to see if there was a limit to how deep I could dive. I knew that most regular humans couldn't go past 200 feet without crumpling like an aluminum can. I should have been blind too. This deep in the water at night, but I could see the heat from living forms and the cold of the currents. It's hard to describe. It wasn't like regular seeing, but I could tell where everything was. As I got closer to the bottom, I saw three hippocampi, fish-tailed horses, swimming in a circle around an overturned boat. The hippocampi were beautiful to watch. The fish tails shimmered in rainbow colors, glowing phosphorescent. Their manes were white, and they were galloping through the water the way ner nervous horses do in a thunderstorm. Something was upsetting them. I got closer and saw the problem. A dark shape, some kind of animal, was wedged halfway under the boat and tangled in a fishing net. One of those big nets they use on trawlers to catch everything at once. I hated those things. It was bad enough that they drowned porpoises and dolphins, but they also occasionally caught mythological animals. When the nets got tangled, some lazy fishermen would just cut them loose and let the trampled animals die. Apparently, this poor creature had been mucking around on the bottom of Long Island Sound and somehow gotten itself tangled in the net of the sunken fishing boat. It had tried to get out of the mangled net to get even more hopelessly stuck. Shifting the boat in the process, it couldn't get out. Now, the, in the wreckage of the hull, which was resting against a big rock, it started to teeter and was threatening to collapse on top of the tangled animal. The hippocampi were swimming around frantically, wanting to help but not sure how. One was trying to chew the net, but hippocampi teeth just aren't meant for cutting rope. Hippocampi are really strong, but they don't have hands. And they're not... They're not all that smart. Rhea, Lord, a campus said when, I got, when it saw me. The others joined in, shaking and asking the same thing. I swam closer and got a look at the tangled creature. At first, I thought it was a young hippocampus. I'd rescued several of them before, but then I heard a strange sound, something that did not belong underwater. <laughs> I got to the next thing, and I saw it was a cow. I mean, I heard of sea cows, like manatees and stuff, but this was really a cow, with the back end of a serpent. The front end was a calf, a baby, with black fur and big, sad brown eyes and a white muzzle, and its back half was black and brown, snaky tail, with fins running down the top and bottom like an enormous eel. Whoa there, little one, I said. Where did you come from? The creature looked at me sadly. Mm -hmm. I couldn't understand his thoughts. I could only speak hoarse. We don't know what it is, Lord, one of the hippocampi said. Many strange things are stirring. Yeah, I muttered, so I'd heard. I uncapped Riptide and the sword grew to full length in my hands, its bronze blade gleaming in the dark. The cow serpent freaked out and started struggling against the net, its eyes full of terror. Whoa, I said. I'm not going to hurt you. Let me just cut the net. But the cow serpent thrashed around and got even more entangled. The boat started to tilt, stirring in the muck on the sea bottom and threatening to topple onto the cow serpent. The hippocampi whined and whinnied and in a panic and thrashed. It didn't help much, I'm telling you. Okay, okay, I said. I put away the sword and started speaking as calmly as I could so the hippocampi would try and calm down. But the cow serpent would not stop panicking. I didn't know if it was possible to get stampeded underwater, but I really didn't want to find out. It's okay. It's cool. No sword. See? No sword. Calm thoughts. Seagrass. Mama cows. Vegetarianism. I doubted the cow serpent understood what I was saying. 
but it responded to the tone of my voice. The hippocampi were still skittish, but they stopped swirling around me quite so fast. Free, Lord, they pleaded.